Hello, good morning my friends. My hair is really crazy this morning and I am sitting here sipping on a delicious cup of coffee from our favorite local coffee store Ziggy's which my husband very sweetly brought me after he went to the gym crazy early and I'm still sitting here in my pajamas. Didn't even get out for my walk nice and early this morning. I've been painting already for a while and I'm super excited and a little bit nervous about today's journey with painting a watercolor landscape. And I titled this video Facing Challenges on the Page because I feel like so many of the things I've learned about working through different areas of challenge and resistance happen on the page of my art journals or on the pages of canvas or on the pages of handwriting journals. And I find that all different forms of creative expression are so essential as tools for personal growth and self-development. Good morning, good morning. I'm looking forward to it too and feeling a little daunted as well. And welcome if you're brand new to painting in your PJs. I'm Dr. Manette and this show is all about me just sharing my own journey and practice with you. This is not always or very often about techniques, but I do share my own personal tips. And you'll watch me mess up along the way, and you'll watch me have a lot of fun along the way, and share the way that I use art personally in my own practice, especially as part of what I call my morning meditation and art activation process. And I went for a beautiful walk the other day and took this gorgeous picture and felt inspired to recreate it in watercolor. So that's what we're going to dive into today. So I am going to go ahead and share my <clears throat> screen here and my allergies are absolutely terrible. So I'm going to ask permission and forgiveness ahead of time and may need to, to mute and uh, everything's blooming and gorgeous and there's so much cotton wood, cotton from the cottonwoods blowing everywhere that I've definitely been feeling a little congested the last couple of days. Good morning Blanca and Blanca I got your email and I will respond. I'm happy to chat. Um, don't know how much I, help I can give but I'm happy to chat. And so this is the photo I took on my phone and just printed out on my <clears throat> little inkjet printer was happy. The colors are pretty true to what I saw um, looking through the lens. And I want to recreate this minus the little building in the center as a landscape painting and not 100% how sure how to, you know, actually do this, right? So, you know, it's kind of interesting to think about where to start and where to begin with the process. So I started in an easy place in yesterday's video. So if you missed yesterday's video, um, you can go back and watch me talking through recreating these colors, the different colors I used. I'm working with Daniel Smith watercolor paints, which I absolutely love, love, love what it is that they do on the page and how they mix and blend. So I did create some swatches in my journal trying to recreate some of these colors as a place to start. And today, in today's video, I'm just going to focus on getting the background down. And I may end up having to do a couple of backgrounds. And then in tomorrow's video, I want because I want it to get super, super dry before I start to add in details with, with um, more color, um, and with a black pen as well. So I may end up doing a couple of backgrounds to try to start working on these elements. Um, right now I absolutely have no idea how to kind of create this beauty up here. This may end up being a little bit of a mixed media piece and I'm kind of thinking I'm going to play with watercolor but I'm wondering if maybe even some gouache might be nice in this to get some of those matte more vibrant colors but again for today my goal is to paint one or two backgrounds and start to just really understand how the colors are going to play and flow on the page and so I grabbed just an inexpensive piece I'm going to put my palette somewhere where 
I can kind of see it and remember what I did to mix my colors. So I've got a piece of 9 by 12 just inexpensive Canson mixed media watercolor. I did not tape it down. I know a lot of people like to tape their watercolors down but because I tend to move things around quite a bit uh, I need to create maybe a have Brad cut me a small small board of some kind that I could use for working on watercolor so that it's easier to move but for today we're going to see which means my my paper may buckle it may you know start to lift up and we're going to see so this video is all about I'm going to you're just going to watch me face my own challenges with watercolor on the page and the more we're willing to face our resistance and paint through the hard parts I find watercolor intimidating I love abstract watercolor, but doing something that's a little more detailed and precise like this feels really challenging. Good morning, Leslie. Um, and so <clears throat> we're going to see how it goes. I have no idea. Um, I'm feeling up for the challenge. And I'm going to grab some nice big brushes. I'm going to start with some really nice big watercolor brushes to do some of the washes. And what I've done is to divide the page. Thank you, Leslie. I appreciate your vote of confidence. Um, to divide the page into thirds. So to kind of give me, I use a lazy Susan. Yeah, that's a, a great idea. I love that. And I know in the Zentangle world, somebody created a really cool lazy Susan for working on tiles that you can kind of spin around as well. But I've divided my page into thirds. We've talked a little bit about this yesterday. I really wanted to mark especially this hard horizon line here with these super dark line of trees that were cast in shadow by the rising sun. We also have darker greens, a lot more detail here, and those colors really start to shift and change as we move from the foreground back to that horizon line. And then obviously we have the, the sky piece with these gorgeous colors and the rays of the sun peeking through. So I divided my page into thirds. And I'm not going to, other than this line, and even in my picture, you notice this line isn't 100% straight, right? Like this is this space here is slightly smaller than that space. I didn't worry about that. I'm going to straighten it out just for my own ease. But I wanted to know where I was going with my colors. So that was how I started, was with marking out those horizon lines. And where I want to begin is I'm going to do a wash of these oranges and yellows in the top, let that get completely dry while I work on the greens, and then come back and add the, the clouds over the top of the oranges because that was what was happening in the sky. It's hard to tell in the picture, but I think it's going to give us some, some interesting layers. So that's what I'm going to try first on this particular background, and we're just going to see how that's going to go. So yesterday I mixed this beautiful Hansa yellow here with a little bit of this pyrrole red to get some of those nice bright oranges. And I'm going to do that. I have like three or five, well, I think I have, yeah, like five different uh, mixing trays sitting in front of me. But this is a pretty big space, so I'm going to get quite a bit of paint. I have spritzed this watercolor paint with some water to start to loosen that up. And one of the things that I learned about watercolor mixing, you know, is that it takes a lot of work to get those colors right and a lot of patience. And it can be challenging to mix up enough of the color that you want as well. And so to not, um, now I'm getting lots of orange in my yellow, which I do all the time. So not to get too caught up in it, but to really play with the amount of water. And one of my friends calls this a slurry. I don't know if that is an official term or not, but I've got a pretty large space up here. So I'm going to need quite a bit of this orange. 
but also when we look at the landscape it's not all orange there's some of the the vibrant yellows mixed in as well and again we can see that you know there's some darker oranges around the edges that's actually um, a blob of paint I put on there yesterday and some of those brighter yellows as we go up and to do this, I am going to work wet on wet as well. So I will go ahead and just get some water down on this watercolor paper because I really want these colors to flow quite a bit. And what I love about the, the Daniel Smith is how much they, they flow. And it's not gonna take very long to do this. So I'm gonna get a little bit of extra red down here right along that horizon line and then when we work wet on wet this way like look how fast the process goes right it did not take long at all to get these colors down and now I'm coming in with some of that more vibrant pure yellow I'm not too worried about that top part up there because those are our darkest colors, although there's a little color there and there's a little color there. And I'm gonna let just all of this color kind of pool on the page. And now you can see why people tape their page down because this is buckling quite a bit, but I'm okay with that. And we're just gonna let this layer dry and then I'm gonna come back and start on the the bottom down here and it may take a few layers to get the colors where I want them to go good morning Marion welcome welcome but this feels like an easy place to start I do feel like this um, horizon line is a little more orange than I want it to be so I just wet my brush and I can just take some of that paint right out because we're going to go back over that with our super dark colors so I don't need that that pool of color there and so now I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up to the line so that this starts to dry by the time that I get up there and again I just want to work with a variety of these different greens in the picture we've got kelly green we've got some like darker phthalo greens in here i'm not looking at the details yet of any of the lines of the grasses or the thistles or the sunflowers and notice then we also have this almost like a titan buff color or a little bit of you know yellow ochre so we're going to want to make sure we're mixing some of those other colors in there so my next step is just going to be to get some color down on the page and see where we can get to again this is going to be the darkest and these lines are just helping me remember that sort of rule of thirds even though this feels like it's all green and foreground this lower third is foreground middle ground and way in the background is the sky and although that that gorgeous sunset part of the sunrise part of the picture does definitely compete with the detail in the foreground so it's just interesting to notice so again i'm gonna work wet on wet here because I just want to start to get some of these colors in and I think I have enough different greens going on here I'm not even going to mix greens right now I might later in those details but for now we just need to get color on the page so this is how I'm approaching watercolor I cannot tell you if this is the right official way to approach it or what a professional watercolorist might do but this is what really felt right to me was just to start oh and look there's some purple in my greens well that's okay is just to start layering in some of these colors on the page and start with a very rough background and then to let this background completely completely dry and start to come back in with details with pen and the fine tuning of the uh, watercolor as well for some of those details all right what kind of green is that one is that that's that same green gold there so yesterday i really 
loved this deep hooker's green. And I maybe want to start to give that some just a little bit of movement. And the one that I really ended up needing to mix was the, and that was on this little small palette, was this where I mixed the Hansa yellow and the turquoise and I got a beautiful grassy green. So I'm going to do a little color mixing here. And again, lots of water to really get that slurry to get a lot of that paint going. And I didn't wash my brush out in between, so you can see I'm kind of making a, a mess of my turquoise down here, but I'm not too worried about it. So that feels closer to those grassy greens up there. Some of that orange is going to kind of flow down. It's fine. It'll all get covered up eventually. And I'm liking kind of where these are going. You know, I'm going to maybe come in with just a little bit of texture so not it's not all completely flat and smooth. And I'm using a very big brush. No opportunity with uh, to do any kind of detail work here at all. So I want to get some of this little bits of yellow ochre in there. Same Blanca. Well, hello, purple. Okay. Not looking what I'm doing here. So actually that purple may be like the perfect color to help us get that. That's what I love about watercolors. We can just paint that out or kind of mix it in and have a little dark color there. And it's easy to correct our mistakes. But I also keep trying with watercolor, keep playing. There's a lot in this sort of little edges over here of this ochre. And again, I may come back in over the top. Might be interesting to bring some gouache in that's a little bit more matte to put in some of these other colors. This brush is very big for this tiny little palette. But I do want some of that more sort of neutral. And in the actual field, those dried spaces are these gorgeous, gorgeous seed pods from dried grasses. And I love how these blend. I love how it just all kind of mixes up together and starts to just really, you know, get a little messy. And I'm really liking that that purple. So I'm actually going to put some of that purple in the under color. Purple and green are great complements on the color wheel. They're kind of a split complement, but we have some nice dark patches down in here. And you know, I didn't necessarily see that yesterday when I was looking, but I think this will give us a nice maybe under layer for some of our greens <clears throat> to come and also will be a nice little way to do get that those trees going along our line here and I'm just going to let that for right now come in and mix with these other colors can always clean up that line so it's fascinating to me when you look at horizon lines like they're very dramatic right like I could have put tape along here to make this really a clean line between I could have waited for it to dry but you know patience has never been one of my virtues ask my husband so already we have something interesting happening on the page I can't necessarily tell you what this is feeling very yellow in the center and not quite green enough, but it feels like it's going in the right direction. I'm loving these little bit of darker colors and probably we're going to want to mix some of that purple. It's probably a dioxazine purple into a oh, look at the, the purple is like blending into those yellows and oranges. So pretty. And I want to keep this horizon line kind of clean. So I'm actually going to come in 
and maybe pick up just that one spot was still wet and just pick up some of that so it'll stop spreading because I want that to have a cleaner line. So we're already getting somewhere interesting. I don't quite know where. I'm sort of looking at this going now. I feel like I want to bring some of my greens back over the top here. But I'm going to go ahead and hit this with my dryer, get it nice and dry, and then decide where I want to go next. So one of the things that's really fascinating to me about watercolor is how much it changes when it dries. <clears throat> how much it changes when it dries. So this already feels pretty and interesting to me. And um, I think where I want to go next is to work on some of those colors of the sky and to be able to actually just reach that a little bit better. I'm going to just turn that upside down and work upside down uh, a little bit, which means I probably want to look at my picture upside down. So notice we have our darkest area of clouds here, but those clouds can, can go all the way down to continue all the way down to our horizon line, right? And I'm this is going to be detailed bits at the very end that might even be maybe some gold metallic watercolor, a little bit of fine tech on there. So to start, I want to get these clouds in over the top of my oranges. I still have some wet paint up here so I probably want to do something about that and as I'm looking at this I also you know kind of want to I'm gonna look at this this way one more time I'm gonna dry this up a little bit and I'm kind of looking at the layout and I want to just very lightly with a pencil kind of mark out where this sort of eye is, kind of looks like the eye of Sauron from Lord of the Rings, where this eye is because I'm going to want to keep that really sort of dry. I can make it even a little bigger and dramatic and I have another almost little eye over here. And then the lines of my clouds are kind of interesting, right? So they do come all the way down here. But I definitely have places, right, where I want to make sure we get plenty of that orange peeking through. But this will kind of just give me a really slight guide to where I want to go next with these colors. And so now when I am working on it, I know that I am going to go around these. I want to make sure those are super dry. So I want to make sure that I keep the water around the edges of these spaces here. And I've got a little bit of a cloud line just to guide me a little bit. I'm trying to drink my coffee while it's hot and fresh. And now I want to go back to my palette here from yesterday and look at these colors that we used here. So this was this gorgeous uh, blue appetite genuine, I think is what this one was. And this might be some indigo, but I didn't even have to blend these colors. They were in my palette. I really like them. And I'm curious to see how they're actually going to look on the page. And if I hold this up right next to them, it's actually that little more, you know, that blue has a little more red in it. That blue has a little more green in it. 
and it's actually that color blue is pretty perfect. So you can see even the variations from a little bit of water at the very top to more water at the bottom, we can get the variations in color that we need. Again, I cannot tell you if any of this is the right way to do it, the wrong way to do it. All I know is that I'm just sort of trusting my instincts here and I am going to, I think this has some purple in it, but this uh, brush is really big. So I'm going to make a slurry over here, get some extra pigment and some extra water. So I just have enough of that to play with. And this is going to be super dark when I first put it on and I'm okay with that. Again, I'm going to avoid that little bit of an eye. Again, I'm going to be totally okay with the oranges peeking through because that's kind of what's happening. And this may be one of those black backgrounds that just needs a variety of layers. Again, working to just keep, so you notice this time I'm working dry. I did not add more water to the page. Okay, it's challenging actually painting upside down. It's definitely easier to reach. but I don't quite get the perspective that I want. So let's turn that back around. I thought I was going to use that big flat brush, but I don't think I am. So in my photograph, there's one tiny little bit up there of the, the color showing through. And I'm kind of maybe not sure how I feel about that little bit showing through. And notice already the difference between the wet areas and the dry areas. And these down here are much lighter and brighter. Again, not thinking about detail, not trying to get it perfect. There is no perfect. There's just how can I start to build up those layers? A little more pigment at the top so we get those nice darks built in up there. It's fascinating to watch the watercolor layer and still see all the colors peeking through. Not sure I love the oranges and yellows peeking through. That's why I said at the beginning that I would probably end up doing a couple of these backgrounds until I feel like I've kind of gotten the, the color like I want it to be. And there are just like some little wispy bits in there, but I don't really love the way that looks. So by having more of the orange underneath, it's sort of making those clouds a little bit more orange than I wanted. So it's interesting. I also feel like, you know, the the way this orange here pooled. Thank you. I'm just noticing, Leslie. I'm not really judging. I'm just noticing where I want it to um, pool and look right and how I want it to look. So it's, this is about learning what it is that I like. So I don't feel like um, it's, it's judging it necessarily, but just kind of, hmm, isn't that interesting? And what might be possible if I didn't have the yellows underneath, right? So it's more just working from that place of curiosity. What do I like? What do I not like? That's what makes us, you know, help us to really find our, our own style is that idea of just sort of being in that discovery process of what do we like or not like. 
I love the way it looks, but when I look at the photo, I'm like, okay, that's not quite right. Not quite right. So I'm just starting to darken up this tree line here a little bit. It also needs, um, I think, some dark green over the top, but we were starting to build up some of those darks. And I do even have some white watercolor or maybe some white gouache that I might be able to shift the, the color of that a little bit. And I'm also going to come in with this same dark blue, this indigo blue, and in the same place where I put some of those purples down here. I'm just sort of repeating colors around the canvas to start to build up the layers. This is not going to need a lot of layers because in our picture there's not as much detail, right? It all starts to really sort of blend together, although we have a little line of dark there, a little spot of dark. There is a really interesting line right across the page here where we've got some darks there, so I may decide that so maybe I want to start to just sort of call some of those out. And this blue is a great way to do that over the greens. And this for me is the, the beauty of watercolor is just being able to play with the paint, play with the layers. And the more that I look at it like play and experimentation, what do I like, what do I not like, then the more that I can really understand how it is that I want to build up the, the picture and the painting. Um, and as it dries, like more and more of that yellow is coming through. So again, it's just interesting, right? And it's all just about finding that place to start. And because you guys know me and I don't really care that much about, you know, messing things up or not messing them up, I'm super curious if I came in with some gouache because my daughter keeps telling me how fun it is to blend gouache with watercolor and to use them in different layers. So this is a watercolor gouache. Um, I don't know how much you've missed or not Blanca, but you can always re uh, watch the, the replay. So when Andrea and Ali were here this past weekend, we played a lot with acrylic gouache, which I really do love acrylic gouache and it dries matte and um, has like, you know, just a different texture and just, I'm so curious about gouache and I'm trying to learn different ways to use it. And I have this beautiful set that my friend Mary Rose gave me and my daughter to play with when she's home in a few weeks. This is watercolor gouache. So like watercolor, once it's dry, it can be reactivated but with water. But I'm curious what happens if we just use some of this right over the top, what will it do? Will it mix all the way back with that yellow? Or can I actually get a little bit more of a matte finish so I can bring back those blues a little bit? I don't know. So again, this is just a big fun experiment. Really love the top of this. Don't feel like I want to touch that at all. Feels like that's great, but it feels like this under part here had a little too much of the yellow. And the cool thing is, is that if I end up going, okay, this really isn't working for me, then I can just start over, right? Like this is still a pretty landscape, still can have fun adding details or Zentangle patterns over the top of this. But for right now, I want to kind of stay in that sort of experimentation phase. What I do love about gua gouache, the watercolor gouache, that um, is to me the most interesting part is it dries very matte. Watercolor gouache is what a lot of illustrators use to create their designs. So it's kind of um, always interesting to try these new things. Okay, this isn't going to be quite the same right blue. And I don't know, so I'm curious what's going to happen if I bring my indigo back into that. 
but that is a really pretty color and I think it's going to make an interesting underlayer. But we need to bring our indigo back there. So I'm going to get that dry and set that gouache back aside. And let's just see what happens. So my goal for today's video is to get the background done ish done ish and then tomorrow to come back and really focus on adding the details uh, I would love to sit here all day and finish it but what I've discovered about watercolor is that if I let it sit for a longer period of time then I'm ultimately more happy with the results And I've got a lot of water on here, so it's definitely taking a little bit of time to dry. I notice I've got a little puddling down here that's going to give me some nice dark parts. This definitely has ended up being too purple, and I'm going to want to darken that up with some blues or greens once it's nice and dry. Okay, it's dry-ish and it's very interesting because it's definitely, so my paper's getting all nice and buckly, so I will let it dry and then I will probably also flatten it. Um, so what's so interesting is I'm getting that nice matte effect of the gouache and it is doing a pretty decent job of pushing some of that color back and now I'm curious if I come back in with this gorgeous indigo over the top of that what's going to happen. So this is the part of art making that I love like what feels daunting for me and where my resistance is is actually in the final details of the piece and trying to recreate you know what I see in the photo or what I see in my head and not in this 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 middle part is actually the really fun part for me getting some more of that gorgeous blue and it's going to mix with this uh, the it's reactivating the gouache so the gouache is like watercolor paint it does get reactivated with water but it's going to mix those two colors together nicely. And it's interesting when this blue is drying, it actually has an interesting purple cast to it. Okay, so that feels maybe a little dark, but um, also feels like I want to let that get nice and dry again. I love what the gouache did with the paint because it really did cover up the yellow bits that I wasn't loving so much and again all of this can be reactivated with water at any time. I want to be mindful of some of these hard edges and maybe you know soften some of those up so just reactivating that. I'm going to get some more paint in here in this edge. As well. And again, I didn't try to, to imitate the, the clouds completely. I feel like maybe I got a lot more blue than I wanted so at this stage I really feel like I would want to recreate the background with less cloud and more of the sunrise colors so when I'm looking at this I got kind of carried away with the clouds and so I'm missing a little bit of this and this maybe up here a little bit and once the blue is dry, I can also come in and brighten all of these areas up and see if that kind of solves the problem. So this is one of those exercises. It's definitely first not only, right? First not only. It's kind of like my friend Andrea always says. So I don't need to get it perfect right out of the gate. 
and I'm thinking if these just get a little more of that orange in there. And again, I'm working with this huge brush, which means none of this is super precise, right? And I can come back in and just brighten up all of those colors because remember, as the watercolor dries, I can even let it blend a little bit in there, get some of that nice, because see, I didn't wait for the blue to dry, but that's okay. It's all a happy experiment. And I actually love how it's sort of mixing in and I'm getting some of that color back. All right, super fun. So I need to walk away. Thank you, Blanca. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. It is definitely coming along nicely. So I need to step away from the sky. Like I'm, you know, feeling that, oh, I just want to sit here and play and mess with it, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to see if there's anything else I want to add to the background. Right, how many times did he paint those water lilies or Van Gogh in his sunflowers and, you know, fields of wheat, right? And so, um, I think I'm going to come back now with like another layer of all of the greens over the top of this and start to create even a little bit richer. So this feels very rich and saturated. And so this is feeling a little more washed out. And what I notice is this is very rich and saturated. And so is this. And then that washed out is kind of in our middle ground here in the center. So I'm going to come back with this gorgeous hooker's green, lots of water. And again, just kind of that, so that feels really dark. But again, I want it to be dark. It's going to, you know, there's going to be a lot less color when it dries. And so I'm just kind of looking at my, those areas of dark, making them just a little more dramatic because I added the, the purples and the blues, greening them up a little bit. And definitely feeling like it needs uh, a lot more of these sort of grassier Kelly greens in here that feels too, like I'm trying to start adding detail and I'm not ready for detail. So I wanna just start to get these washes of color going. And I really love the green appetite genuine and how it's creating these modeled colors all on its own. So I'm working on a commission piece for a friend right now and I find commission pieces, I think I said this yesterday, definitely daunting and uh, I've been having so much fun with Mid Journey which is using AI to sort of create the structure and the style of the piece and it's been the fun experimental part and the next stage is going to be to go to that, you know, actually hand drawing the piece. And it's just like this one, right? It's it's going from, okay, I have the idea and I know where I'm going. And then there's resistance to taking it to that next level of detail. All right, so this feels like it's starting to definitely get some of the multi-layered look that I want, getting some of that. This is a Naples yellow. It's almost like a, a yellow ochre. And we've got more of that, you know, just sort of swatches of yellow. Those gorgeous seeds. Some of that is probably going to get also whitened up and have detail added to. But it feels like it's coming it's coming together still feels like the the sky ended up a little darker than I want it to be and I can just go with it as is or I can repaint it I love how the feathers of the paint already started to 
you know, sort of create some of those rays of the sun up there. And I want some more of this sort of nice, more of that Kelly green, that really grassy green, which was the Hansa yellow and that turquoise. Yeah, that's what it needs is more of that sort of middle green. And rather than having my brush go back and forth, you notice I'm starting to use my brush to create some of the texture. So I started with those really simple washes and now I have moved on from those washes to getting some of the texture going in the foreground, getting some of the texture going in the foreground. But in the background, we don't have all of that texture, right? So we actually have just this kind of multi-hued field of these greens and yellows. But there's not nearly as much of the detail in there because it is off in the distance. And this is even pretty like as it is right now. So, you know, I could call it done um, and, you know, be pretty happy with this first layer, but it feels like to really push through the resistance, I definitely need to figure out how I'm going to come in and add the detail in the foreground of the grasses and the flowers since you can see where it's wet still I've got a little bit of shine going on there okay this feels like a great background layer I need to stop fussing with it and for now and just walk away and give this overnight to dry the papers kind of naturally flattened itself out I'm noticing I've got a lot of yellow in here actually so I think I need to come back and bring the orange back. So we've got a lot of yellow and I love the yellow but really that sky is super orange so see here I go starting to really mess with it but let's get that layer of orange down there that feels better right feels better it does feel like a great start and that feels good for today so we're going to let this dry and i will be back tomorrow morning at 8 a.m mountain time to decide where to go next and start putting in some of the detail as always thank you for joining me so live on painting in your pjs with minette please hit that like button to let people know that this is a video worth watching and if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. And as always, thanks to all my regulars. You guys keep me going and coming back every morning. I appreciate you so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. Bye, everybody.